Hello everyone, it's Michelle. Welcome to another Heart Panorama podcast and today I have another guest and this time it's Dolly from France. Hello Dolly. Hello Michelle, hello everyone. So today our topic is France and Germany. We want to compare a bit because we figured out that we live in countries that are so close <laughs> to each other and we thought it would be interesting if we compared the two countries with each other. And so we will give you some quick facts about France and Germany and we will also talk about the school systems in our countries and later we will also talk about food because everybody loves food. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I think I will start um, and say something about Germany. Just some quick facts for those of you who don't know. Germany is a country that is in central Western Europe. And our capital is Berlin. We have about 82.5 million people living here in this country. Oh. And something that is special about the structure of the country is that we have 16 so-called Bundesländer. That's something similar to federal states. I looked up the translation, which is constituent states, but I think it's easier to understand if I <laughs> explain it a bit more. These are like 16 regions in the country where you have a separate government that decides some aspects in the country, but still the main government of the whole country is still in Berlin. So, oh. how, so how about France? What's the oh. structure there? <laughs> <laughs> so in France, we are 67 million habitants. We're in France, we are localized in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. So uh, the structure of uh, France, we have uh, 30 regions in France and five in overseas, mm -hmm. like uh, Guadeloupe and uh, Réunion. Mm -hmm. So Paris manage the whole country, but each region uh, manage uh, the financial aspect of city, like uh, school, events, mm -hmm. okay. roads. So you said they also manage the school systems or just yes. the financial uh, no, the just the, just the financial. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have this. So mm -hmm. the, we are in France. Every school has the, the same system, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, each uh, city has the, the, the same system. We don't have a different uh, mm -hmm. uh, city. So should I just start talking about the school system in Germany because mm -hmm. I think it's a bit different. So the school system as it is, is organized within these 16 Bundesländer. And the main structure of the school system is actually the same in the whole country. <laughs> and it can be that there are a few differences between a school that is in my Bundesland. For example, I live in Rheinland-Palatinate, that's Rheinland-Pfalz in German. And mm -hmm. the neighboring federal state has a bit of a different structure, but oh. the main structure in Germany is usually that when you are three to six years old, you go to kindergarten, but that's not necessary. So if your parents say they want to keep you at home and one parent stays at home or some, something, that's also possible. But when you are six or seven years old, you have to mm -hmm. go to school. And then mm -hmm. it's primary school, usually four years. But I read today that it can also be up to six years, but I don't know which Bundesländer have that system because where I live, you go to school, uh, elementary school for four years from first to fourth grade. And then uh, you change schools because there's a certain system. There are three traditional types of schools. For example, when you're very, very good at school and um, mm -hmm. you have no problems at school, you're good in different subjects, then you can go to the gymnasium. That's mm -hmm. like the school where you can stay at until grade 13. And then you're ready to go to university. 
And then there's the second type that's for the students who are not as good as the ones who go to gymnasium, but are also uh. not too bad, so to say, the middle. <laughs> and they can mm -hmm. go to the Realschule. And mm -hmm. it's the school for, yeah, for the students who maybe are good in one subject, but are not so good in different other subjects. And they go to school for six years. So they finish in 10th grade. And after that, they can either do an apprenticeship mm -hmm. or if they're good enough, they can also switch to the gymnasium into grade 11 and then go on from there. And then we have mm -hmm. a third type of school for the ones who are not that good in different subjects and who need a bit more help at school. They go to the Hauptschule, that's the German term. Mm -hmm. And I think they have school until ninth grade. And there's also the case that if you are getting better at school and you finish grade nine, you can switch to the Realschule, to the, to the other school that has one okay. year more. And then you can do your diploma there. And then after mm -hmm. that, if you're still good and you don't want to do an apprenticeship you can still go to the gymnasium if you're good enough and then there's another type of school which is called Gesamtschule that means it's a school for everyone and if your parents feel like you shouldn't go to any of the three other types of schools but they want you to be in a school where they help you in different subjects where you're bad at and They put you in a better class in the subjects where you're very good at. Then you go to the Gesamtschule. People can decide if they want to go to one of the three traditional types of schools or mm -hmm. to the Gesamtschule where everyone goes, no matter what academic level they are. Okay. After, yeah, well, after, after, uh... <laughs> after the gymnasium, you get the diploma, which is called Abitur and that qualifies you for university or you can also still do an apprenticeship if that's what you want to do after school mm -hmm. and that's the main structure here I think <laughs> oh, yes it's yeah. very uh, different mm. what is it like in <laughs> France because I have heard things about France's school system in my French class but I think it's more interesting to hear it from someone who is actually <laughs> in France <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, in France, uh, so in the law French, you must to go in uh, six years. A lot of people send their child in uh, three years. So in this, this first time in go uh, in uh, in a kindergarten in uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. After they go um, in ele elementary. Terry school. Mm -hmm. For how long? Until elementary school. How many years will that be? Mm, I don't know. Uh, five, five years. Oh, Six. okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So five, five years mm -hmm. after um, kindergarten. And after we go uh, in, um, in the middle school for uh, four years. Mm -hmm. And the last, last uh, years, we can choose to go in high school mm -hmm. general. It's a general for the people who want want long study or you can choose high school pro. Pro, it's for students who want um, a short year when they have uh, the diploma, they can uh, work just after. Ah, okay. It's pro. Mm -hmm. professional mm -hmm. but if you want a longer study uh, to you want to go in university you go in a high school general mm -hmm. it's more general in the final you pass the exam his name uh, is baccalaureate each study branch have own exam mm -hmm. okay. for example when someone shows uh, scientific they don't have the same Exam for anyone choose economy. For example, me, I chose uh, high school general because I want to go in, in university after. So 
when I go in the high school. The first year, everybody um, are the, in the same class, in the same classroom. But after, we look uh, the bulletin. We look uh, at the score. And the score say if you can go in a scientific, economical, or literature. In the high school general, we have two branches, general or technical. It's for uh, the profession who need the practice, mm -hmm. like, um, like, uh, like a nurse or a um, technician, mm -hmm. because we need practice. But like economical, scientific, or literature, mm -hmm. we don't need practice. And after, when you get uh, your baccalaureate, you can go in uh, university or big school, university, big school, or someone uh, want to work, but uh, it's difficult because uh, we don't have experience. Like uh, high school pro, in the high school general, we don't have uh, experience, so it's difficult. You must uh, continue to have a good uh, diploma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What language uh, did you learn in Germany? School. Uh, in school, we. Uh, I think it's also different um, between the time when I was still at school and now. For example, when I was in elementary school, you could choose an additional class where you could learn English or French, for example. But I think nowadays the children in elementary school have to learn English. And when you go to your secondary school, that means after that elementary school, you at least learn English because it's the international language. And then mm -hmm. you can choose between French or some people also learn Spanish. And there's also some schools that teach Latin, like mm -hmm. the old Latin where you have to translate and, into your language. And I think that's the main languages that are taught. I think there are different schools who maybe teach a different language. For example, there are uh, schools that focus on the old languages and they teach either Latin or Greek, I think, or like old Greek, oh. but I'm not sure. <laughs> It depends on the school. And for yes. example, in my school, um, I started with French classes in fifth grade in the secondary school. I already had a French class in my elementary school, but that was something that my parents chose. I didn't have to visit that class, but I wanted. And when I was in fifth grade, I had to choose between English and French first. Then I chose French because I could already speak English because of my mom because she wasn't able to speak German when she came here in Germany. And mm -hmm. that's why I already learned English when I was very little. And so my parents said, when you start language classes in your secondary school, you should start with French because you can already speak English. So I started with French in fifth grade. And then uh, my English classes started in seventh grade. And then you could choose if you wanted to add a third language and some of my friends chose Spanish but I chose Latin because I thought I might need it for my studies at university because I didn't know what subject I wanted to study and I think for example for medicine or so it's useful to learn Latin because you already know these specific terms which are usually in Latin. And that's why I didn't know what to study after school yet. So I thought it would be more useful to study Latin as my third foreign language. And now looking back, I'm actually glad because it helps me a bit with learning different other languages like Italian, for example. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's the main languages we learn. It's either English It's, it's always English, but then you can choose between French or Spanish or Latin. Depending on your school, there might be also other classes, for example, Italian or, I don't know, different okay. languages. <laughs> oh, it's very good. <laughs> What do you usually learn at school in France? Um, 
Uh, so in the middle school, you can choose two languages, Spanish or German. Oh, German. <laughs> yes, German. Okay. We can, you can speak German, mm -hmm. but a lot of people uh, choose uh, Spanish because okay. uh, German is uh, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Spanish, some words are similar on France, mm -hmm. so it's more easy to speak uh, Spanish mm -hmm. uh, to German. And um, in the, the high school, you can choose um, a third language. Mm -hmm. So this is dependent uh, to the high school. For example, my school proposed uh, Italian. And uh, a school uh, of my friends proposed uh, Chinese. Oh. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. So each uh, high school has a different language, depend the uh, the teacher and the work. so for me i speak uh, a little bit english <laughs> you can learn this <laughs> do you have to learn english at school do the schools say you have to take that class english is obligatory we learn english in middle school mm -hmm. but uh, i think uh, it's changed so i don't know if we start in the uh, elementary mm -hmm. i don't know But uh, we learn English in the middle school. It's obligatory. And uh, you can choose uh, after a second language. So you learn English, obligatory, and, and second language, Spanish or German. For me, I chose English and uh, Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, I speak uh, also Arabic from uh, my parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my parents teach me uh, Arabic mm -hmm. to communicate with my family yes. but uh, mm -hmm. I speak better Arabic to English and Spanish mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but you probably learned it when you were a little kid already yes mm. uh, but uh, in France we are famous to we don't speak very well English <laughs> <laughs> if you if you depend on the school and the teacher you mm -hmm. can You can't learn English very well. <laughs> you must uh, practice. For me, for for example, I practice my English mm -hmm. in uh, video games. But uh, if you depend in the school, you didn't learn very well. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny because it's really a stereotype that French people often have a difficulty to speak in English. Yes. <laughs> I think it's funny because in Germany... There are so many people who can understand English. I mean, there are still a few people, for example, the older people are the ones who don't like English. They um, still have difficulties with English, but I think the majority of people at least understand the language. <laughs> yes, in French, mm. very uh, um, big careful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very hard to to find someone to speak your English very well, mm -hmm. <laughs> except uh, a big event, event, event like uh, Disneyland. Or, mm -hmm. uh. So it's good that I learned French whenever <laughs> <laughs> okay. I go to France. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I, I don't have to speak English. I still can speak French. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a big advantage for you mm -hmm. <laughs> if you go in France. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's true. You are not a problem. <laughs> Okay, I think we talked a lot about the school systems, <laughs> but before we forget about a very nice topic, which is food, <laughs> yes. we should just continue with food. <laughs> yes. Do you want to start or should I say what I thought of that aspect? Mm, you start. <laughs> okay. So I didn't know where to start because food is a very huge topic. <laughs> So in different regions in Germany, the food or the specialties vary. So it's not always the same. And for example, um, there are some specialties that you eat in southern Germany that are also similar to Switzerland and Austria. Because the countries are so close, <laughs> it's difficult ah. to distinguish between the special food there, I think. And what is special about Germany is I think that there is a lot of 
different bread types. <laughs> you have uh, ah. brown bread and white bread, and you have these huge pieces of bread or just tiny bread. I think they're called bread rolls in English, <laughs> but I'm not sure because in German we just say Brötchen, which just means little bread. <laughs> bread. <yeah. laughs> we also have a lot of sausages. I think that's also a stereotype internationally <laughs> because people usually also think of sausages when they think of Germany. But we do actually have so many different sausages <laughs> like Bratwurst and Frankfurter Würstchen. That's some sort of small sausage that you can eat any time in between <laughs> and um, what I also think that most people connect with Germany is beer because ah. I also looked it up and I have to say I, I looked it up on Wikipedia um, it's actually proven that Germany is the nation which drinks the most beer I think <laughs> well we and, have the uh, same uh, the idea in France <laughs> With Germany like this. <laughs> uh, I know that a lot of people think that Germans always drink beer, but <laughs> I think it depends on the person because between my friends, there are some who like beer, but personally, I don't like beer, so I, I don't drink it. But I'm also Swiss, so <laughs> I can, uh, <laughs> it's, it's still an excuse to say I'm not a German, I'm, I, don't, <laughs> I don't drink that much beer. <laughs> but... Uh, It's very common also in parties. You also drink beer, but you also drink other beverages. For example, wine is also very popular, especially in, in on parties. When you drink cocktails, you also have vodka and so on. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, a... not, it's not always beer in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> mm, in France, we like uh... <laughs> we like bread every day. <laughs> In France, if uh, you don't see bread in the table, it's very uh, it's very strange because <laughs> we love accompanying uh, bread with uh, cheese. With, uh, <laughs> with, with the dish, yes, <laughs> the dish. We love it. So it's not cliche, but in France, you can see a lot of people with um, with bread uh, after work or mm -hmm. <laughs> for for dish. We love it. And um, in France, uh, we like uh, like Germany. We have uh, each region has a specialty, like uh, les, les Bretons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They have, for example, uh, la galette saucisse, <laughs> or uh, uh, les crêpes. <laughs> oh, les crêpes! <laughs> yes, les crêpes. We have that in uh, Christmas markets here in Germany. We usually eat crepe. <laughs> mm, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, what uh, do you have in breakfast in uh, and Normally, mm, I think it depends on the person. <laughs> But usually <laughs> it's uh, something with bread, uh, either cheese or sausage. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> sausage or marmalade or it really depends on what you like personally but it's usually <laughs> something with bread <laughs> or you can also eat something called muesli which is actually from switzerland and mm -hmm. it's called muesli there <laughs> in english it's called cereal apparently so it's just something you can put in a bowl and put milk on it and just eat it <laughs> yeah i think these Two are the usual things, but you can also vary depending on what you like. For example, if you like to eat pancakes, you can also eat pancakes. But in Germany, the pancakes are different from the United States in America. Oh. I think in America, they have these little pancakes. But in mm -hmm. Germany, the pancakes are thinner and a bit bigger. So ah. They're not so small and thick. You just put the dough into the pan and then make them as big as the pan is. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like crepe. I think it's the same material, but it's a bit thicker than in France. That's mm. also something you can eat for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Or waffles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm going too far there. You can eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> in France, uh, in my home, our breakfast is not very fat. We put a lot of fostache, uh, like uh, cereal, um, bread with uh, jam, mm -hmm. confiture. <laughs> Same like you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> someone like uh, to eat uh, cheese or um, fruits or uh, juice. Mm -hmm. Oh, we also drink oh. juice sometimes <laughs> or maybe coffee or hot chocolate. Just uh, You can choose or tea. Mm. But usually uh, it's coffee, yeah. I think. <laughs> okay, like uh, I like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so I I drink uh, morning and uh, afternoon. I like coffee <laughs> <too>. in my <laughs> home. Yes, <laughs> in my home it's particular because uh, I'm uh, originally from Morocco, so we mix the uh, French and uh, Morocco. Mm. <laughs> So, what is your favorite dish? My favorite dish is actually something Italian. I, I, <laughs> It's spaghetti bolognese. I think everyone mm -hmm. knows what that is. <laughs> I, I like different dishes, but that's my favorite, favorite, favorite meal. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I also like mashed potatoes. I think that's the word in English. <laughs> In German, we say Kartoffelpüree. My third favorite dish is something that my mother prepares sometimes. It's called Krautwickel in German. <laughs> And it's some sort of cabbage. You can choose if it's Savoy cabbage or China cabbage or something. I don't know what's the proper English word for that. And then you put in hash meat. And then you roll it, like mm -hmm. the, the cabbage is around the meat, <laughs> and then cook it. Mm -hmm. And that tastes really, really good. Mm -hmm. These are my three three favorite meals. <laughs> How about you? Mm -hmm. So it's just, I am Christian. You are sweet or salty? <laughs> hmm. It depends, I think. <laughs> <laughs> depends day. <laughs> yeah, I think for lunch or... Dinner, I would rather eat something salty or mm -hmm. spicy, but I like sweet meals, for example, when I eat breakfast or when I have a snack in between. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And what so, is your favorite mm. dish? My favorite dish is cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Uh, Very um, famous about the cookies. I like cookies. Uh, I, I eat every day in breakfast. In, uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> yes, I like it. And overall, I like, uh, but it's a speciality uh, from Morocco. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pastilla. Pastilla with uh, the chicken. I like it. <laughs> Because... Uh, They mix it the salty and the sweet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they are a particular dish. So this is why I like it. Because mm -hmm. uh, they, they mix it in and I love it. But uh, I prefer chocolate. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan of chocolate. <laughs> If uh, in this... Um, But you can in eat... This, uh, <laughs> you cannot eat chocolate mm -hmm. for lunch or can you... <laughs> If I can, I can. I can. If you want, you can. Okay. <laughs> if you will, if I will, take it. <laughs> yes, I like. <laughs> I like chocolate. So one day with a friends, I go in convention speciality for chocolate. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I say stop! I want to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any special sweets in France? The most popular sweet? sweet? Yes, the most popular sweet in France. Uh, macaron. Oh, <laughs> Everybody knows macaron. 
I don't know if there is a special sweet in Germany because there are so many. But I recently uh-huh. watched a YouTube video where people were trying German sweets and there were, for example, the gummy bears, which are called gummy bear <laughs> or gold bears in Germany. Uh, translated, it's golden bears. <laughs> I think they they are very popular, but yeah, also different kinds of chocolate and I don't know candies. <laughs> In Germany, there are so many different sweets or candies, so I don't know if there is a specific one that is traditional for Germany. So let's just say we have a lot of candies. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But yeah, I think I think we talked enough about food now because I think we're starting to get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want so, I want Kuchi now. <laughs> but it was very interesting to compare France and Germany and see that there are a lot of similarities in terms of sc- yes. school also and also food and mm-hmm. uh, that they influence each other. For example, that we also eat crepe. <laughs> I found, I found that very interesting. <laughs> It's very uh, strange because we are um, we are next to, but we mm-hmm. have a different uh, food system uh, yes. in school. So it, it's very interesting. Yes, there are some similarities, but also some differences, even though we're so close to each other. Yes. It's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> So, merci beaucoup, Dolly, for joining my podcast well, today. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> was, you very much. Too. It was <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, very fun. <laughs> to everyone listening out there, thank you for listening until now. And if you like, you can comment what it's like in your country. Tell us. We're very interested in that. And if you liked our discussion, please like and subscribe. And I would say goodbye and talk to you soon. <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs>